Good morning. It's been a little while since I've been on. Not saying it's been a little while since I've traded, because I definitely traded. And I talked, I think last week maybe it was, I was like, I'm going to go ahead and start recording all of my uh, hedging stuff so I can continue on where the Forex Hedger left off. Forex Hedger. The channel's called the Forex Hedging? I think it's what it's called. I linked it in the other video below, or not below, but wherever it's at. It's an interesting way to deal with hedging and how to get out of it. I never really thought of it in this way. And whenever I was doing hedging, I would always get into a position where I would find myself in so much drawdown, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. And so while hedging was great for a risk management structure in, 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 in then building up an account, it was really, really great. I loved it, except for the drawdown. That's where the psychology really got me. So I am testing, I have been testing, for quite some time and we're actually going to take a look at it and I'll show you my setup and I'll show you how I actually handle it through trading view and through MT4 so you can actually see I know the Forex hedge he would do two separate accounts on trading view through Oanda and that's how he'd manage it CoinX allows me to be able to hedge on the same account so by doing that uh, you'll see exactly how I manage it so let's go ahead and get over there now these are the pairs that I actually do the hedging with, all the ones that have the red mark right here. And red just means they're all unhedged at this point in time. They're all open, active, for me to go in and squeeze them as they move and everything like that. I actually say they're all active and not hedged, but actually they're, that might not be accurate. I think I might have one or two that are actually hedged at this point in time. They were overnight and I was, I, you know, I don't manage them overnight so I don't really care, but I did get alerts this morning and I just haven't actually re-tagged them to be green to let me know, hey, these ones are hedged, these other ones are not. Um, and then I'll usually tag them for like orange if I don't have a position on them whatsoever. So let's just start with odd CHF. We're gonna go here, we're gonna open the chart. Oh look, odd USD just said go ahead and manage it. So let's go look at that to begin with. Let's go to odd USD and see what the chart is telling me to do. So on the four hour, it is dropped back into the zone. I'm actually looking closer on the 15 minutes. Let's go down to the 15. So we're back in this zone now. And I'm thinking price could possibly bounce from here. So here's my plan. We're going to actually work through it right now. 0.33 is where it's at for odd CHF, or odd USD. Let's open up MT4. Odd USD is at 33 bucks, but we're in drawdown by 33 is, or 100 and something right now. So I'm gonna figure out how many it would take to close it out. Looks like we'd get probably about nine. So I'm gonna close out nine at 27 bucks. I'm gonna close out this whole thing. And now I have 24 units at $74 in drawdown that are unhedged. So I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna spin this around. I have, this is completely closed. This I'm going to edit, maybe. Where are we at? I need to go to settings, text, Come down here, I want, where are we at? Right there. I subtracted nine, 0 0.09. We're down to 24, 0 0.24. That's what we have left. <clears throat> I need to balance this hedge at 0.24 and I just wanna come a little bit below this support area here. So it looks like 89.50. Let's do a little measurement. Yeah, that's only five pips. So let's let's give it a breathing room, 10 pips. So 8,900, 689. So I need 24 on a buy stop. So I'm gonna come here, odd USD, new order. You're gonna turn sideways on me, that's fine. Market execution to sell stop, 24, and it was at 689.
There we go. Sell stop, 689, no take profit, no stop loss, place. Order's open. So look down here. We have a sell stop for 24 lots at 689. We are good to go. <clears throat> so now I come back here, put in, get off of that 689. I mark this up as a cell, 0 0.24. I will set an alert to let me know. Select all, hedge. Just put a little H in there for a hedge. <clears throat> and there we go. So, that's what I've done so far. And what I'll also do is come in and see. <clears throat> we came back over here. If we look at today's trade, I made seven bucks on that trade, closed this trade at 9007. So I'll just come in and mark a little nine. Nine zero zero seven. If price can get above back this level, which doesn't look like it will, it looks like we're going to close. We're probably close below this zone here. Maybe. We'll see. Um, but if price can get back this level and maybe get back up to here someplace, I will set an alert there to tell me to squeeze it. And what does that mean? Well, that means if price were to get up where I just set that alert at right now, I would then move this position further up, probably in here. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get hedged on this one, which is fine. <clears throat> yep, looks like price is plummeting. So I would move it to there. Once it's there, I'm actually, um, that's sort of break even. Like I haven't really changed the position. If price can continue moving up, I will continue moving the position up, trailing behind it each and every time. Anything above this is gravy, because that just means I've whittled down my drawdown. I've taken down my profit, and then I'll be able to whittle down my drawdown. We'll see how this actually plays out, because who knows? It might come down here and trigger me in, and then I'll be set to just manage the position again where's the next zone that i would expect price to start bouncing at right down here so this would be my next management level let's see if this goes a little bit yeah no that's it <clears throat> that would be next management level so if i get into a position there then that is what i'll be looking at to get in and possibly take profits again and uh <clears throat> and hopefully it'll bounce it'll you know it'll it eventually going to bounce at one of these places and the idea is to try to capitalize on that bounce take a little bit of profits as i can get them capitalize on the pullbacks and on the pullbacks is where you start losing that you start narrowing down your drawdown and so that's what i'm looking to do now so there is that. That's odd USD. And you just saw how I trimmed it. Took a little bit out, took a little bit off. Uh, I have a 0.33 for odd USD. That is the max that I can take for a total position size. So I still have 0 0.09 that's sitting out there that I could add back in at some point in time. Uh, we'll just have to see how everything goes. Now... That was odd USD. Let's look at odd CHF. Odd CHF looks like it's getting ready to hit its uh, its position as well. We have two 14s on the outside. I have 14s all the way around. 28 is my total here. I was playing on the inside of the two hedges. I was hedged 0.14 on a sell at one point in time. 
then a buy, and now I'm in the middle between the two, seeing if price will bounce. So that's that one. We just did AUDUSD. There's Euro GBP. 0.24, I'm waiting for a price to continue moving on up. I had a good position later on in the week or last week, and this green line right here is where I took my profits. If I would have held for a lot longer, where I was expecting price to go, I actually would have gotten a whole lot higher, which was really nice, but you never know. You do not know what the market's going to give you. And because of that, you just gotta take what you can. This management style just helps you to mitigate your risk when you're wrong, which much like many traders, we are generally wrong more than we're right. So this is just one way <clears throat> to manage risk. There are many different ways to manage risk. This is just one of them. Euro USD. Um, I have some cells here. Looks like this cell is getting ready to come into this zone here. As soon as price comes into this zone, I'll close both cells and see what we can go from here. This has a 0 0.07 as my max, and you can, as you can see, I'm in 0.14. Um, that's only because the drawdown was so low. I moved from the four hour to the 15 minutes, and I'm toying with that. Um, one, because I want to consistently be able to just continue doing it. The four hours, you know, every two days maybe I might be able to trim something. And I just wanted to be a little bit more active. So I dropped down to the 15 minute, and I have much smaller, I have a smaller, um, hedging window that it's not 30 pips 40 pips it's usually like 15 20 and then a smaller take profit based upon the 15 minutes so it's all good it works out really well or it has been working out so i'm not going to complain so waiting for this one to drop down nzd cad <clears throat> looks like we've dropped back we're dropping back into this zone here which is good because once we're down back in this zone i think i'll close this one <clears throat> yeah. Yep, now that we're back in this zone, we're going to go close this one. That was NZD CAD, right? Yep. So let's go look at NZD CAD. <clears throat> NZD CAD, 40 bucks right there. Close order. And then close the buy stop. Delete order. All right, so that was a clean trade. Good stuff there. So let's come in here. We'll clean out that. That's gone. And this alert's gone. <clears throat> now, the question is, what do I think will happen here? Well, I think we'll bounce. And so I can get 0 0.20. I would like for it to push a little bit deeper. I would like to come down here. So if we can get an alert here, I'll take a buy from there. Come here to NZD CAD. I would change this to orange, just like that. <coughs> NZD CHF. I'm trying to figure out where these other positions are. I'm waiting for this one to see if it'll fall. Because if it'll fall, I could squeeze it a little bit, as well as <clears throat> um, hopefully it can fall into position, and I'll just take profit. So here's another one. So this was the original close. I had a buy that went up for a hedge. I closed out the hedge, and now I took profit, and price has whittled its way down into that hedge zone. So I have actually decreased my drawdown. So that's the beauty of that. I have made money and decreased my risk exposure <clears throat> from there. And then NZD USD. Are none of these trades? I'm waiting for this one to fall as well. And then I can decrease the risk there. The same thing here. Here's the green. That was my actual original entry or my original close. We're below it. So all this is just extra. I've already taken profits off and I am actually decreasing my drawdown size. But we're gonna have to go out to the four hour, I see. <clears throat> Here it is, there we go. 
So this is how I've been keeping track of how my drawdown is. This is one of the things you actually have, if you're going to do this method, you have to play with it. You need to figure out what your max stop loss, what your max um, drawdown would be. So if you had a, you know, a thousand dollar account, if you wanted max drawdown to be $200, you would need to play around with your position sizing to know how many times could you be wrong trimming and squeezing and trying to trim and squeeze and getting hedged over and over again. How far out of the money could you eventually be before you get close to that drawdown? So if you look here, you're not going to let me zoom in that way. If you look here, originally in my first position, I was $73.60 in drawdown. Then with some squeezing, some trimming and everything like that, it came to 76. Some point in time, I got it down to 43. Then I got it down to, what is it? It looks like 120. Oh no, not down to 120. It was at 120. Then it got down to 86. Then it was to 157, then it was to 115, then 80, then 150. Max has been $250 of drawdown on these positions. And so <clears throat> you have to know what that is and you have to account for that. This just ebbs and flows. When we go and look at this, my negative $533 of drawdown right now at one point in time, I was negative $900 in drawdown. And so if you don't have the margin for that, you either need to start decreasing your, your position sizes or you need to add money into your account to account for that size. But that's something that you've got to work. I would learned the hard way. I learned a couple different things the hard way. One was management, one was adding. It, like all of this just takes nuance and you have to learn how to do it. So you have to practice it. But I made the lo biggest losing streak, losing size, what is it? I lost the biggest amount ever in my trading career. I lost three grand, pretty much wiped out my account and I had to start over. I started over with a thousand bucks and we're up to 1600 or 2600 so i've made 1600 dollars with it i think i did that three weeks ago <clears throat> is about when it was so if we look if we look last week how much did i make 217 bucks how much did i make last month uh 800 or 759 so if we look over the last three months this is where we're going to see that huge huge uh problem that i had so I had a big loss. I had got myself over hedged. I didn't know what I was doing. I was learning everything. It was a learning process. It was ugly. I added more money back to it. And then I went and test tried getting out of the hedges that I was in. I was really, really confident that Friday because I had gotten out of them plus with like two, three grand of profit. It was beautiful. I was really excited. Sunday rolled around, spreads had widened, something had happened and Coinex had margin called my accounts. Like 80, 85% of them they liquidated. Took that and I'm like, you know what? All right, lesson learned. I did learn that lesson on what not to do, how to get hedged and all this other stuff. It's like, <clears throat> I feel confident about it. Took another thousand dollars, threw it in the account, and then this is where I've been since then. The thousand, I quickly threw it up and made it to two thousand. Um, I had a couple clean trades that were like three hundred dollar. So like, there's a USD CAD um, for two fifty seven. Uh, I had a couple clean trades like that, and it, it got up there really, really quickly. It was nice. There's another USD CAD for about a hundred bucks. Another USD CAD for one hundred and ten, and so. Oh, no, the USD CAD for 91. They got up there really, really quick. And um, actually, that's all September. Where are these at? Whee! Or that was July. Yeah, so I don't know. I never really look through these. I use the account. So there's the added $1,000 in there. 
Okay, then 100, 26, 200, 100, bunch of little ones here, 100, 100, 100. <clears throat> and so it, yeah, the account got, it got up there pretty nicely. And I was like, okay, cool, let's keep it going. And so ever since then, that's what it's been. I have consistently just been able to pull out, um, you know, sometimes you get $200, um, you know, if you figure last month, Eight hundred dollars. That's probably about two hundred dollars a week that I was that I'm roughly able to to windle down. Um, if we do today, today is made forty five. Um, so it's like it's it's a nice process. It's pretty easy. It doesn't take much. Um, check NCD CAD. Let's go look at uh, NCD CAD. I guess I hit something. Oh, wait, is that for a different, that might be for a different uh, thing. <clears throat> but, what was I going to say? Tomorrow, I was going to hop on a Zoom call with somebody who is testing this out. He's going to get a FX Replay account, the trial account, and then we're going to get on there and we are going to test this out. If I think about it, I will probably throw the link in the community tab and if you want to join come on and join follow along ask questions in the chat but I don't know if I can mute everybody's mic and just leave one person open um, but if you want to join and come see maybe ask questions maybe formulate your own questions I am game for meeting up with people who want to ask questions because they're learning the process. No matter what you do in this niche, this career field, you have to make this process your own. Even if you were to follow what I was doing to a T, there's no guarantee based upon your experience, your risk tolerance, your life, that you would be able to be successful. There's no guarantee. You have to tweak it to you in many different assets many different facets of your life. You have the time crunch that you have. You have your family. You have your workload. You have your risk tolerance. You have your personality. There's all sorts of things that you have to figure out how to make it work. Any strategy out there is going to work, but not any strategy works for every trader. You have to figure out and mold and shape what works for you. So, if this is you and you'd like to come join along, I have a Discord. You can come in there. You can ask questions. That's where this guy came and was like, hey, I, I saw the hedging and I want to know if you can help me. It's like, absolutely. Let's do it. If I have free time, I will absolutely do it. And from time to time, I have free time. So, And then if you want to um, just talk through Discord for a little bit. The key there being this Discord is not a community for people to come in and just talk. The Discord is for questions and answers and then for you to go and run with it and see if it applies. See what you can tweak to make work for you and your strategy. If you are still searching for the holy grail, you should give up now and go find something else to do. Because the holy grail is what you make it. You're not going to find it out there. You have to make it. <clears throat>